Hey coach, uh, first off, just want to ask you about the respect that this team is starting to get over the past, you know, couple games that you guys have played. What do you feel about how you're seeing people talk about this program in the future it has? Well, I love the team. I love the way they compete. You know, they don't say a word about who's hurt, who's out, who's not there. The next guy goes in there and he plays his heart out. And uh, and we've had a lot of people not play this year, you know, that, and nobody says a word about it, including me. And I shouldn't have said anything about it now because the bottom line is we have practiced four deep and our players are ready to play. Just been really proud of them. And I'm I'm happy with the direction uh, the program's headed. Very disappointed we weren't able to win, but happy that uh, where the where the program's headed. Nikki, Coach Whitman, could you give us an update on Noah Gatlin and um, also Bo Limmer? Um, what did you see when you put Ty Clary in the game for him? Well, I think Noah's going to be okay. You know, he got hurt the first play of the game. Obviously, Dalton Wagner came in. Man, I'm proud of him. He's got such a great attitude, came in and played well. Uh, and then Bo, uh, I think, you know, we had talked about, you know, getting Ty on the field. You know, Ty had missed about 20-something days from different situations uh, in camp, and he's been having really good practice. So we were, we were planning on putting him in there at some point anyway, because he had earned some t- playing time. Uh, we just played him, I think, maybe end of the s- second quarter, somewhere in there, all the way through the game. And it uh, just gives us added depth. But nothing's wrong with, with Bo at all. We just uh, decided to try something else, and, and uh, Ty played uh, well. Tom. Hey, Sam, I got a little bit of a two-parter. How do you think the team has done getting over kind of the hurt from the way that game ended last week? And then secondly, question about cornerbacks, how Clark and Kari Johnson held up, and do you expect – who do you expect to be back in that rotation this week? Well, you know, you all ask me these questions all the time, and I don't know, guys. I mean, I don't. I mean, you know, we came back, got home about 11. 11.30 11.30 on Saturday night, and, you know, we're getting updates from our training. But, I, you know, I'm hoping that we get Mo, you know, that we get uh, Monteric Brown back, uh, that we get Slusher back, um, that Jerry's able to play. Uh, but, you know, we're out there with Kari Johnson and, and uh, Hudson Clark, and those two guys did a heck of a job, and and uh, your first part of the question was about getting over the, the loss. I, you know, I haven't been around the team. You know, their day off is Sunday. Uh, but, again, I truly believe that our players will react like we do. And we're going to show the good, the bad, the ugly today, learn from our mistakes, get better from our mistakes. Got a lot of work to do, a lot of work to do. You know, we didn't tackle well. Uh, we didn't. Uh, play special teams well. Uh, we didn't start the game well on offense. Those things have to get create. Uh, we have to get those things fixed to win an SEC football game, and that's what we're going to go after today. Um, yes, yeah, Sam. What are your thoughts on Ole Miss, particularly? I guess their offense is. Scoring an incredibly amount of points. Their defense is giving up an incredible amount of points. What do you think about Ole Miss and especially the offense and what Kiffin's doing they're, there? I'm telling you, they're incredible. I mean, they are. I mean, they're fun to watch. They're scary to watch, but they're fun to watch. And it starts with, with their quarterback, uh, Corral, and then, you know, Early and Connor are two really good running backs. They've got a, a, a nice offensive line, a physical offensive line, and then you go with Drummond more. And Mingo, those guys can play along with some other guys. But I tell you what, the guy, that, the transfer they got in from Tempo, I'm, I'm not positive how to say Kenny's last no, name, Yabo, maybe Yaboa. I don't want to be disrespectful to him because 
that kid is a great football player. And uh, so they've got weapons to throw to. Uh, certainly they're fast, fast, fast pace. And that's what Coach Kiffin's obviously known for offense and he's known for, for a reason because he's an excellent football coach and they've got an excellent offensive football team, excellent football team. Touch. Sam, kind of piggybacking off of Tom's question earlier, what did you specifically think of the way Kari Johnson played getting his uh, first defensive action in a game like that? And what's he and Hudson Clark really done in practice to maybe get the nod over some of the other guys? Well, they, they you know, they practice well. They've come in and watched extra tape. Uh, they basically made the coaching, their position coach believe in them, you know, by the way they act, the way they play, the way they practice. Uh, Kari, uh, he was nervous, you know, and there early, he, he was, he was playing corner at free safety depth, you know, uh, I, I felt for him, you know, cause he's out there against a really great receiver and, and, uh, but he, he figured out the speed of the receiver, the, his moves, different things. And he played a really fine football game. I was really proud of him. I'm saying that word proud a lot. I know I'll, I'll find another word that means proud. Uh, Coach, the, the offense got going pretty good in, in the ball game, but is is there any way you kind of jump started and maybe uh, create a situation where they can get moving earlier in the ball game? All of that to me uh, directly relates to our pregame. Um, we don't start fast because we don't start pregame fast. We're out there uh, basically going, hey, look at me, look how good I look in my uniform and not getting ready for the game. And that's got to stop. And that's our fault. That's my fault. We've got to get our players going in, in pregame warmups. We've got to knock heads a little bit. We've got to run routes faster. We've got to catch balls. And we didn't hardly catch a ball in pregame. And uh, therefore, we started very slow. I believe everything matters. And I believe everything correlates to winning if you do it the correct way. And we did not. And that starts in pregame warm-ups. Hey, Betty. Hey, Coach, I'm sure you're probably ready to move on from this. So last question on it. But did you send any plays in to the SEC offices for review and have you gotten any kind of response from them, whether an apology or an explanation? Yeah, we, we've got a, uh, we sent in, I don't know, you know, usually Trey, we'll send in five to six plays to look at. And I think it was probably about what we sent in this week. Uh, some of them were alignments on our punt team, you know, were we too deep? And we were on some of those as well. They were some new kids in there that, that, um, we have to coach them up better and things of that nature. But yes, I, I have, I've heard from the head of officials and, and, uh, and I'm at peace with it. Um, I don't really know what to say, you know, um, I don't want to go into it, but I heard from the head of officials and I understand, uh, what happened now, and uh, so we'll move forward on it. But I'm <clears throat> I'm disappointed in the outcome. I can tell you that. Scotty, hey Sam, I wanted to ask you about your tight ends. Hudson had a nice game at Mississippi State at Auburn. It was Blake Kern. Just what led to his kind of his breakout game and, and him getting a majority of the snaps at tight end. Hudson couldn't play, so that would lead to Kern being in there. And Kern did a nice job, made some good, caught some good balls and uh, blocked better than what he had. And, and he had a nice game. I was proud of him. And he, you know, he, he tried to play more physical, but Hudson could not play. He had an injury. Nate. Sam, just you got basically the whole practically college football world saying, you know, Arkansas was done wrong on the officiating deal. How do you get the team kind of not feeling sorry for itself going into this game after something like that happened? 
Well, I'd ask y'all to quit writing about it and talking about it. That would help. Uh, you know what? No matter what happened, the outcome was the outcome, and we can't change it. Even if there was a mistake made, even if whatever, we can't change it. So uh, I never spoke to our team one time in the locker room about officiating. Not one and will not today. It is what it is. We're one and two instead of two and one. And we have to go play a heck of an Ole Miss team. And I'm not going to mention it to them because what good is it going to do? Um, so we're going to leave it at that. Let me know if you've got more questions in the chat. Kara? Hey, Coach, I just wanted to ask you about Davion Warren and how you feel about his contributions that he's made to this team. Um, man, he's played well. When he catches the ball, he gets open, got some speed, can make people miss. To think he would be where he is right now when the season started, I said, I don't know. I hope so. But, man, he's playing good. And he's got confidence and doing a heck of a job for us, and we need him to. You know, Traylon obviously was out, and we need him to continue to do what he's doing when we get Traylon back. Nikki. Coach, uh, Felipe looked about as good as you probably could have asked of him on Saturday, but um, he did get credited with a, a couple of his own, um, I guess, pressures uh, for not getting rid of the ball fast enough or whatever it may have been. So what are, what are some things that you still want to see him um, grow through um, for the next game and, and future games? Oh, I, I just think that um, if he, you know, knows that it's not open, he probably he probably would tell you that he probably needs to make a little bit quicker decision if, if there's nothing there to, you know, tuck it and go get what he can get. Um, but I wasn't displeased really with even the sacks or, that he took. I, you know, I, you know, Nikki, it was so wet and windy. And, you know, I think he might have been afraid of, you know, trying to make a play that he normally would make in different conditions. So I was pleased with what he did, uh, but I think he probably would make a little bit faster decision on, hey, maybe I can take off and run a little bit here. Um, Sam, from my viewpoint, you guys got into your best offensive rhythm of the year starting in the second quarter. What played into that? What, what did you see from Kendall like the rest of the way that seemed like y'all were productive? and you expect to get some of your top playmakers back this week? Yeah, uh, yes. I think we'll, I think, I think hopefully we'll be close to full speed as much as we can be. But again, I don't want y'all to think I'm lying to you. I'm just telling you what I know on Monday, you know. But I feel like, you know, we'll have a chance to be uh, pretty close to full speed. And the bottom line, I think our, our offense goes when we can run the ball. And it doesn't have to be eight yards and doesn't have to be. 12 yards, it has to be three, four yards, get drive starters, give us manageable, you know, possessions, uh, manageable opportunities to run play action, because that's what we, that's what we do. And uh, I think you have to win first down. We talked about it last week about winning, getting the first, first down to get this fast paced offense started. I think some guys start fast paced. And we kind of like to get that first first down before we really start going super speed. And, and so uh, I think that's what they, they did a little bit better. Jordan. Yeah, Coach, you were just talking about running the ball, and you've mentioned that your offense is so centered around that. Are you guys on the way to where you want it to be? And if not, what are the points of emphasis in practice this weekend moving forward to open up that ground game? Well, I'm not, I don't know if this was our best running performance of the year, was it, Kyle, so far? So we're getting a little bit better, and, and we're, we're, we're trying to emphasize the strain. And, you know, we're, we're cutting down a little bit of our run game to try to get better at specific runs. Uh, obviously, we won't be able to run play action off of those runs. But 
uh, I think our kids are, you know, to get better, you have to have a, some confidence. You have to see it on tape. And they saw it a little bit from the Mississippi State game. And then they'll see it a little bit more, a little better uh, last week. And, and I'm assuming that uh, we'll continue to improve there because we're working awful hard at it. To answer your question, I think maybe we'll cut down a few of the runs and try to get better at a shorter list of runs. Bob. Yeah, I'm here. Sorry, I am yeah, had to unmute twice there. Um, Sam, we seen you take Felipe out on the goal line, I guess Mississippi State in last week and um, putting the other quarterbacks in didn't work like you wanted to. Well, what, what was, what's your thought press process on taking Felipe out? And then why'd you put a Hornsby in instead of Jefferson at Auburn? Well, uh, because that was our goal line, uh, part of our goal line package going into the game. And uh, so that's what Kendall did. We felt like we could get outside when they're all uh, hammered inside on us. And, and so that's, that's what he decided to do. And, and we worked it all week. It just didn't work out. And KJ's situation was the same uh, the the uh, week before. I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and second guess what what we did because we practiced it every day, and that's for the fans, I guess, and and y'all to second guess on that. But I mean, when he called Malik in there, I had no problem with it. We practiced it. It looked good. Uh, so that's why we did it. Sam, you, you mentioned after the game that uh, Bumper and Grant weren't really able to practice much last week. How, how are they holding up physically? And, and how do you think they'll maybe be able to do a little bit more practice this week to prepare for Ole Miss? No, I don't think so. I mean, they're, they're both beat up. So we're not going to hit them, either one of them, before Saturday. Hopefully we can get them both ready to play. I, I don't know that answer. We're pretty we're pretty beat up as a football team right now. We just got to get some guys back. Trey Beatty. Hey Coach, you've talked about some of these guys individually, but when you really put it all together as a group, and you're talking about, you know, a, a, a walk-on at cornerback, true freshman at cornerback, a former walk-on at safety, um, you know, defensive end, you've got, you know, two second-year players instead of maybe guys you thought would be there, and then offense, you know, Blake Kearns, former walk-on. John David White's played a lot. You know, given all that, and to structure this as a question is kind of hard, but given all of that, are you surprised if you were told at the beginning of the season that you'd be playing winning football with all of that happening at one time? Oh, you know, Trey, I'm a believer, man. So, uh, I believe in us Razorbacks, man. So, Am I nervous sometimes, you know, when they say, well, so-and-so is not going to, he ain't on the plane, he's not on the plane, he's not on the plane. You know, yeah, it makes you a little nervous. <laughs> but we prepare these guys. And more than anything, we let these kids know we believe in them. And it gives them a confidence builder. And we do believe in them. But uh, the, the key is I think they're just playing extremely hard. They know what they're doing. They're playing extremely hard. And – and uh, we're all awful happy uh, with their effort and what we may or may not have physically. We have to get a, become a bigger team, Trey, because right now we're getting hit and we're getting hurt. You know, uh, we have to uh, obviously get in the weight room and, and get bigger, but get stronger because, you know, we're, we're breaking up a little bit uh, and teams are just much bigger than we are. I'm not saying they're more physical because half of our injuries is us injuring ourselves and hitting somebody so hard. But uh, obviously it's a big man's league and we we have to continue to get a little bit bigger in the weight room and, and also in recruiting. Scotty. Yeah, Sam, you mentioned earlier Dalton Wagner came into the game for, for Noah and had a good attitude and Clary came in and played well. What's kind of your, your offensive line coach take uh, on how those two guys performed? Well, I met with them all yesterday, not the players, but the coaches. And 
you know, I got an opinion too, Scotty. I used to be an old line coach, you know, so. I yeah, that's what I, yeah, that's what I meant. What was your, your take on it? Old lines playing, you know, I got long years of experience in it myself, but. Yeah, that's all I was asking for, for your opinion on it. I'm teasing you. Uh, but I thought they both played really well. And uh, uh, it was it was good to see him in there, man. Um, Clary, you know, obviously a two-year starter, and then he wasn't playing much. And Wagner, he just an old tough country kid. I mean, he just a tough guy, you know. And tell you what, he might be one of the most popular kids on the team. Every time he gets in front of the team, everybody's whooping and hollering. And so I was proud for him. And uh, they were ready to play. You know, that's a, that's a combination of the kid and the coach. So, you know, I was teasing you, by the way, Scotty. Nate. Sam, just with an offense like Ole Miss that, that seems to score at every turn, how much pressure does it put on your own offense to, you know, not just to, to almost have to score every time they got the ball? What's the highest, what's the best word for highest amount of pressure possible? What is that in the dictionary? That's what it is. We better score. Our offense better come to play because their offense is unbelievably good. I mean, it just is. So does it add extra? Yeah, it does. But I don't know if it does or not. We try to score every time. But I know we've certainly talked about it as a staff. Two more. Bob. Um, Sam, well, how about Ole Miss's defense? I mean, I know they're put out there a lot because Ole Miss goes so fast, but they've given up a crazy amount of points. What, what's your take on their defense and how to attack those guys? I love y'all giving me stats or questions. Y'all do that a lot, by the way. You tell me everything's going on and then ask me the question. Uh, they probably have not played as well as they want to play. They are talented. They have some good pass rushers. Number 13 is a good pass rusher. I'm sorry, I apologize, I don't have his name right. It was Sam Williams. And, uh, but they have some, they're built to rush the passer. Uh, they run a couple of different fronts, a three man or an odd front, a four down line front. They're, uh, they can play any secondary, uh, you know, three, two, six, eight uh, man. Uh, but they, you know, they they haven't stopped the run probably like they'd like to stop the run. And and uh, but I'll say this: they're they're getting better each week. They you know they played Alabama last week, and Alabama's pretty special up front on the offensive line. Last one, Tom. I don't have the stats on this, Sam. But I'm guessing <laughs> Ole, Miss, Ole Miss gets the ball in space about as good as anybody offensively. And it looks like there's a lot of misdirection. What are they doing? What, what are the principles of their offense, what they're trying to do? It's a lot. They're very similar to us. I mean, if you look at us, it's a where's the ball. And then there's a lot of different, you know, run, uh, run routes across deep and then replace, you know, hoping your corner will – We'll go with the, the inside route and then re, replace that area. A lot of replacement routes, a lot of things that, hey, I'm going to run you out of this zone and then I'm going to run somebody else in it. And that's basically passing football, but they seem to do it extremely well. And their quarterback is dynamic and he can, and he's a big threat running the football. So, I mean, uh, Coach Odom and his staff have a great plan. Uh, we're going to go look at it today. But they're the real deal on offense now, real deal. Bob says intense pressure is a, is a good term to use to describe how much pressure you're going to have. So, What's that, buddy? Bob says that intense pressure is a, a good intense. term for the yeah, pressure we, we have. We have put intense pressure on our offense to go out and score some points. Thank you, Bob. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach.